In this video today, we're going to be talking about a very important concept in Scratch that has to do with how you make sprites move. So let's go over to our motion blocks, shall we? They're the ones that are dark blue. The first few motion blocks are pretty simple. Move 10 steps. But once you start going down the list, you start to see a lot of blocks that talk about X and Y. And if you're not sure what these letters are referring to, it can get very confusing very fast. X and Y refer to a mathematical tool that helps us understand locations on things like maps and graphs. If you're still not sure what that means, there's a backdrop here that can help you. So go to your new to your backdrops library and way down at the bottom is one called your XY grid. Click it and you'll see it comes up. It looks pretty much like a graph. This is known as the XY coordinates and it has four different quadrants. One, two, three, four. X controls uh, where things go to your right and to your left. Y controls movement up and movement down. The center is zero, zero. That means X equals zero and Y equals zero. As you move to the right, the numbers get bigger for X and as you move to the left, they become negative numbers. For Y, as you move up, the numbers will get bigger. And as you move down, for Y, they'll become negative numbers. About as clear as mud, let's try using some of it with our code. I want Gobo to be right in the center of the page. So I'm going to look at this one that says go to X and there's a blank where I can type in any number and Y with a blank where I can type in any number. I know the center is 0 for X and 0 for Y. So once I put in those numbers I can click that block and voila! My little gobo has moved to the center of the screen. If I want him to move to the right, I need to change the X number. So let's say I want him to move right over here to this hundred number. I'll type that in. So now X equals 100 and Y equals zero. This means he's going to move to the right, but he's not going to move up at all because Y is staying the same. Go to can be very useful for getting your sprite into the position you want them to be in. I can change X too. Here I'm going to try changing X by 100. That means he's going to move 100 steps more and in this case because it's a positive number he's going to move to the right. Watch what happens. Let's go ahead and have Gobo go back to the center. Remember the center of the screen is X equals zero and Y equals zero. If I want Gobo to move to the left, I need to use negative numbers. Negative numbers are the ones that have a minus sign in front of them. So let's try change X by negative 100. He should move 100 points over to the left. And again, he moves 100 more points to the left. Let's go ahead and get him back to the center, which is X is 0 and Y is 0, one more time. Y works in the same way, except it moves up and down. So if I want X to move, excuse me, I want X to stay the exact same, but if I want Y to change, maybe I want Gobo to go down. 
take a look over here. That means I need negative numbers. So let's go ahead and type in negative 100. X, he's not going to move to the left or right, but he will hopefully move down. If I want, I can also change Y. Let's go ahead and add in 100. And he'll go up and then up again. So far, we've only done it where either X or Y is changing and the other one is staying at zero. But in fact, usually your X and Y will both have numbers other than zero and it indicates a place on our graph. So this would have a certain X and Y number. This one, this spot here would have a different one. One down here, this would have a different X, Y number and so would here. Let's try and see what that looks like. So let's say I want X to be 50 and Y to be negative 100. And he's down there. If you want to see Gobo move from place to place, you can use this block which says glide one second to, and you put in your number for X and you'll put in your number for Y. So he's starting out at 50 x50 and y is a negative 100. Let's go ahead and have him glide to where x is 110 and y is 200. And you'll see he's moved way up to that point. You'll see that here are the xy coordinates that he's at, but you can also look right here. And if I move Gobo or any sprite, this little picture up in your right hand corner will always tell you where he is according to X and Y. Remember X says how far to the right or left of center he is and how far up or down is what the Y indicates. So, you might be wondering what happens if I have a background other than this grid, Mrs. Olson? Even if you have a different background and you can't see that grid at all, the grid is still there. The XY coordinates are still there. So you can see Gobo is still at negative 109 for X and negative 2 for Y. I'm going to go ahead and click and he still moves from place to place. Let's go ahead and return him back to center by having him glide one second to where X is 0 and Y is 0. It may take some time to get used to thinking of the center of the screen as 0 and thinking of this half of your screen as a negative numbers and this half as positive numbers. Same with up and down. Above center is going to be positive numbers for Y and below center will be negative numbers for Y. Another place you can look around is right down here just below your screen is an X and Y coordinate. It's going to show you what X and Y is wherever your mouse is. So you'll see, I can move it around and have a pretty good idea of where the X, where my mouse is according to its X and Y coordinates. It may be tricky, but I believe that you guys can get used to thinking about where your sprites are by thinking about X and Y. Good luck and we'll catch you in the next video.